Welcome back, guys. So again, in this series of lectures, we're talking about pulmonary rehab, and in this particular unit, we'll kind of go over the nuts and bolts of like what actually goes into a pulmonary rehab assessment and some of the things that we do um, in terms of interventions. So again, our goal of pulmonary rehab is to, again, we're not gonna reverse the disease process. Our goal is to improve my little pen, the symptoms from disease. We're going to decrease disability, right? That's really kind of where we make our, um, you know, that's, I mean, we make our name as therapists. Like, I'm not going to probably reverse your condition, right, especially if you have a chronic condition, but I could probably make it a little bit easier for you to move around despite having that condition, which I think is always kind of neat. So, again, our populations are gold classification two through four, you know, anyone with an interstitial disease, we're talking about IPS, cystic fibrosis, bronchiectasis, which are a chronic uh, variety, thoracic age abnormalities. Anyone lung trans post lung transplantation, we'll learn more about that next week. And then uh, lung volume reduction surgery, which is really a major thoracic surgery. And again, the, the primary components is the assessment, we'll get into that, exercise training, education, nutritional interventions, and then psychological support. So I like this um, graph here, which comes from uh, the, the American Thoracic Society, which kind of breaks down like the, the, the overall concept of how how rehab works, or how especially how pulmonary rehab works, right? So again, your health condition, right? How that if you know, you know whatever you have, whether that's you know COPD, IPF, or any any condition, right? How that has an impact on activity. Right, how environmental factors, personal factors, and impact activity, you know, body functions, func you know, body functions and structure, and this, you know, participation, right? Um, but you might notice these are all kind of connected to a certain degree, right? So your, you know, your your health and condition, your health condition can affect your activity level as well as your activity level can affect your health and condition. Um, your participation can also affect. Um, body structure and functions. Like these things are kind of work, like kind of integrated. But a lot of what we do, again, as PTs, we're not going to, you know, we're not going after the health condition. We're not even necessarily going after some of these other contextual factors. We have to acknowledge them. We're really going after. We're, you know, our domain is is this. That's kind of where our domain is as, as rehabilitation specialists. Um, now, again, looking at some of the things that may be involved. And this is a COPD model. Um, this is exactly the same still though as in patients with you know, IPF, the same kind of constructs, right? That COPD or any pulmonary disease is gonna affect heart function, respiratory function, exercise tolerance, muscle function, structure of the lower extremities, especially the quadriceps and legs. We see, you know, if you're not moving around, those muscles get very weak, which will impact activities like walking and moving around, changing body positions, lifting, carrying objects, you know, which will impact their ability to participate in leisure activities, performing at a daily routine, dressing even if they're really, really symptomatic, um, participating in employment that like pays them, right? Um, or just like complex interpersonal or so, you know, social relations. It's kind of hard to keep friends and keep engaged in a social group if you can't move around too well. So we intervene by addressing these aspects, right? We improve these body function and structures, right? To allow them to get back to activities and then their participation in society. So, you know, again, my view of rehabilitation is I'm not, I don't develop rehab programs or interventions based on a condition. I base my interventions um, and assessments, uh, or based on my interventions, based on what I assess, right? So what I what I glean, what, what is a limitation or body function structure impairment that is impacting their activities, that is impacting their participation in society. So, you know, I don't have a program for patients with COPD. I may have, you know, programs, um, or I don't, and I, I don't have programs specifically for a condition. I may have an idea of, my, of what I might want to assess in a patient with COPD. Um, but you know, I'm looking at systems, right? I'm looking at body function and structure, um, you know, in those patients, right? So um, don't think of it as like, what do I do for a patient with CPD? Think of it, what do I do for a patient with balance disturbance? What do I do for a patient with respiratory muscle weakness? What do I do for a patient with dyspnea? What do I do for a patient with impaired exercise capacity who may have this underlying condition? So you know, 
it's a way to kind of approach rehab from a systems-based approach so you don't get kind of too deep into the weeds trying to you know match things up specifically to interventions focus on what you can assess and then that can drive to what activities might be limited they may tell you what activities they have limitations with and then that drives your assessment right and then drives your interventions right so you treat basically what you can assess um, I don't know if that makes, you know, hopefully that makes sense to you guys. So the clinical assessments that I'll um, put a patient through in a pulmonary rehab um, setting is kind of similar to what you might even see in a, an orthopedic program, but I mean, but the assessments will be different. The domains will be the same. So I'm going to do a review of their past medical history and then the HBI, the history of the president. I was like, why are they in my clinic, right? So I'm going to go over any relevant history, diagnostic tests or a patient with COPD that would be a you know, PFT, right? That would be probably as well, maybe even a chest X-ray if they have one or perfusion scan. Medications, like what medications are they on and how that's how is that going to impact, um, you know, rehab? And then ask them, like, what, what are you currently limited in? Like, what do you want to get back to doing? What are your goals, right? Because that's, I should always be trying to integrate those into whatever I am assessing in my prognosis for them um, as a physical therapist, right? Or as a rehabilitation specialist, right? And then I'm going to get to quality of life and, and, and um, you know, questionnaires and for P COPD, specifically dyspnea. So there are some validated ones out there, the MRC dyspnea scale, uh, the short form 36, the St. George respiratory questionnaire. There's also things specific for chronic disease, um, the chronic respiratory disease questionnaire, the COPD assessment test. These are good as well to get a, an objective measure of quality of life. Right, um, you, can always ask, you can always ask the patient like how how good do you feel on a scale from zero to ten, what, you know, nice you know Likert scale or VAS. But these are validated questionnaires in, in most patients with with you know uh, respiratory conditions, specifically COPD. Um, obviously, I'm gonna do a baseline vitals. Vitals are vital. I do it in every patient. Heart rate, blood pressure, pulse oximetry, respiratory rate, particularly relevant for patients with you know lung disease, um, and as well as what O2 supplementation are they on and what method. Right? Are they, you know, are they a patient who's just on room air? Are they on two liters of oxygen? Are they on? Are they using a full face mask? Are they using a venturi mask? Like that's going to give me an understanding what's their baseline physiological status before I put them through my physical assessment. Right? Going to take their height. Going to take their um, weight. Um, and because we know BMI, especially for patients with COPD, is really important. Um, if they don't hold them to a lot of muscle mass and body mass. Right, their their survival likelihood of surviving isn't super great. Remember, think of that catabolic state. If they have very if they're very underweight, that's not a good not a good sign. Uh, height can also be important to track. Um, in patients with very severe kyphoscoliosis due to their COPD, if they have a thoracic fracture, um, we saw like you know acute changes in height. It's a way for us to kind of see well, maybe there's something a little bit um, you know, sinister going on in their thoracic spine. So height, weight, BMI really important for patients with respiratory conditions. And then I'm going to get into physical examination. So I'm going to do an upper quarter screen. I'm going to do a lower quarter screen. I'm going to look at active range of motion, like how well their arms and legs moving, just from a general assessment. I look at myotomes to see are they, you know, neurovascularly intact, right? Um, get a baseline assessment of strength just from doing, you know, a manual muscle test. Maybe I want to throw in, um, you know, if I if I have it available, a handheld uh, dynamometry, especially for the quadriceps. Look at knee extension, knee extensor strength. Um, but you know, we can get by using some other functional tests. We'll get into a bit to assess strength, right? Um, I'm probably gonna do a respiratory muscle, uh, testing as well. We'll get into why I, this is particularly relevant for patients with COPD and, and chronic lung disease in general, but it's a way for us to see is respiratory muscle weakness. Is that a contributor to their dyspnea, right? And if we could improve the strength of the respiratory muscles, maybe we can maybe allow them to move around a little bit better. So the only way to determine if that's an issue is to assess do they have weakness, right? So we'll go over peak static pressures and the tire test um, later on um, in an respiratory muscle assessment um, lecture. Uh, then I'll get into uh, functional tests um, and mobility assessment, just like I would do in, in typical PT, right? I'm going to do a, probably a five times sit to stand or 30 second chair rise test. Give me an assessment of lower body uh, strength, um, um, you know, or muscle endurance, right? I'm going to get, you know, assessment here. Gait speed, looking at mobility. Um, we know balance is often an issue in patients with CVD. So if they mention they have a fall issue, 
I'm going to assess it. Might not be a bad idea to, to do a quick just balance assessment on any patient with lung, lung disease because we know that's going to be a concern. So again, like don't think like what do I got to do for these conditions um, or make an assessment just specifically for COPD, you know, but you should have in the back of your mind what are some common impairments or body structure issues that are common in these patients to guide what I'm going to assess. So I can identify potential issues to intervene, right? Um, you can even throw a timed up and go here for a mobility assessment. And I'll probably end my examination with an assessment of exercise capacity. So most places you're probably doing a six minute walk test or an incremental shuttle walk test. Um, we've gone over this before. Or if you have a treadmill or a bike, you can do a submax test, right? You can develop whatever protocol you want to use. Six minute walk test is um, an incremental shuttle walk test that I uh, SWT. These are huge um, in, in pulmonary rehab and all kinds of guidelines for these patients. And you don't really need, um, you don't really need anything other than a hallway for, for those tests, right? Um, you could perform a cardiopulmonary exercise test if you have the equipment available. Um, but that, um, uh, that's not always available in every clinic. So um, this part, again, we covered on all the clinical assessments and things that you would be doing in a uh, pulmonary rehab session or an examination. Again, you, you'll see that it's not that different from what you would do in an, any rehab setting. We're gonna assess, right? We're gonna look at medical stability, right? Review medical history, look at medications, ask them their goals, assess quality of life, do some questionnaires to get some you know, functional outcome measures. Um, you know, do baseline vitals, right? We have some particular things we're going to look at in patients of respiratory disease, right? That are, you know, we might not assess in, you know, most general populations. Um, then we're getting to our physical exam. So we're going to want to do, you know, to see how well their arms and legs are moving. We're going to do a respiratory muscle assessment. That's probably a unique thing for pulmonary conditions. And then we're going to do a functional mobility assessment or functional tests. And we'll do some exercise capacity tests. And then their performance on those tests give you, you know, a framework to identify what are impairments, what are some limitations that they'll probably probably have um, issues with, and then how do I structure my goals and structure my interventions to improve those goals. So the next part of this lecture, we'll get into the basic format and some of the things that we do from the intervention side in pulmonary rehab. Thank you.